here this evening. Uh, it's good to be here on this uh, wonderful, beautiful day. It really was a beautiful Mother's Day. I uh, just like to get outside this time of year. I like to get out and walk uh, Lake Cosby down the road. Uh, very nice. Uh, I'm reminded today of, uh, of a day a couple of years ago when we got out to a state park to do just that, uh, just to walk around, just to uh, you can go hiking a little bit. There's a, a place up there. It's in. It's actually over in Mississippi, but where we were living up in North Alabama, just down the road. Uh, it's called the Tishomingo State Park. You might might have been there before. I don't know, but they got a, a historic swinging bridge, and they got nature trails, and they got places for frisbee and all that kind of stuff. And we were out doing that. Actually, I think Kyle was there with us. Kyle went hiking with us on that day. And I remember, in particular, we went to this trail called the Outcroppings Trail. The Outcroppings Trail. Now, I had all the kids with me. And in particular, I think Austin was about three, year, three years old at the time. And you put all those together. Austin, three years old, the Outcroppings Trail. You can just imagine uh, that experience. It wasn't terrible. I mean, it wasn't like cliff faces really bad anyways. But I just remember, you know, you got to watch kids anyway. But I remember just really just choking up on his arm. And, and he usually I give him no leeway anyway. But I gave him no leeway that day. And, uh, you know, he didn't try to get away too bad. He kind of saw the situation. But I, I remember that experience. And, and it makes me think of a particular scripture. Uh, because you got to be that way with kids sometimes. You got to really put heavy boundaries on them. You got to really watch their steps sometimes. There's this point in the book of Job in which Job has been lamenting and complaining about his situations. And he says something very similar about what God has done to him. You look over in Job chapter 13 and verse 27, and Job is complaining here. It's, it's really clear within the context of the, of the scripture. He says, you put my feet in the stocks and watch all my paths you set a limit for the soles of my feet. Job's complaining there. You put my feet in the stocks. You, you put a limit on the soles of my feet. I cannot tell you how many times I've wanted to put Austin's feet in stocks. I mean, that'd be, well, I need to go rent, a, rent some of those. But especially on that kind of day, thinking of hiking on that trail, thinking of walking so close to edges, you really, the, the literal meaning of this phrase, I, I think, just really stands out when he says, you put a limit for the soles of my feet. Literally, it says, you inscribed a print for the soles of my feet. Inscribed a print for the soles of my feet. I, I just remember, you know, as you kind of walk up a steep hill, maybe, as you know places that are slippery and places that you can find some footing. You know, you, you got that kid in tow and you, you step here and you find it's a good place. And as soon as you take your foot out of it, what do you say? Put your foot right there, right, right where my foot was. You put your foot right there. And as you walk and you lead them, you imprint exactly where you want the soles of their feet to go. And Job here is complaining. He, he said, you put my feet only exactly where you would let me put my feet. You put my feet in the stocks. You limited me and you put so many boundaries on me. Job is just complaining and complaining. And Elihu, the young man that comes in at the later portion of the book of Job, Elihu calls him out on this. Elihu in Job 33 in verse 11, he quotes that particular thing that Job said. And then this is what Elihu says about it. He says, behold, in this you are not right. He's confronting Job. Job, you're not right about this. I will answer you. For God is greater than man. Why do you contend against him, saying he will answer none of man's words? For God speaks in one way and in two, though man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men while they slumber in their beds, then he opens the ears of men and terrifies them with warnings, that he may turn man aside from his deed and conceal pride from a man. He keeps back his soul from the pit, his life from perishing by the sword." Elihu, in so many words, says, Job, you're complaining that God is putting your feet only exactly where God wants your feet. Don't you see that God is keeping back your life from the pit? Don't you see that, that God is keeping your life from perishing by the sword? Don't you see that all these things that you complain about because they limit your freedoms and you can't do what you wish you could do, don't you see it's just the love of the Father? And he's taking you as a child because he knows you don't see the dangers that he sees. 
You, you wouldn't be able to get out of the dangers once you fell into them if you did. And God loves you. And so God has put your feet exactly where he wants your feet to go. If y'all would, please pray with me. Father, we love you. And we just thank you so much for your guidance. Especially in times that we can speak and act as a child. As Job, even your great servant Job did on that one occasion. Not understanding that your limitations and your boundaries, your rules and your statutes, that they are just your love for us. As you see all the dangers of this world and of the, the enemy that he brings up against us, you see all the pitfalls, all the ways in which we might stumble. And in your love, you teach us how we might walk correctly. Father, we pray that you would always, always carry us along as your children in this way and help us to appreciate it and to love you and your law more and more every day and understand it for the love that it is. We pray all these things in your son Jesus' name, and amen. If you're here tonight and you're not a Christian, I understand that at first glance the Christian faith might look like no fun at all, like a, a system of rules and, and, and a hindrance on the liberty that you might feel that you have right now. But the more and more we come to know Jesus and, and what his law truly is, it is love. And I want to invite you to give over your life to a father that will care for you and truly teach you about eternal life and take you there to be with him. Jesus died so that you could have that as your reality. Won't you give your life to him? If you're not a Christian, won't you come to him tonight by faith, turning away from your ways, repenting, coming to him in the waters of baptism where he will wash away every single sin. If you are a Christian but you've not been following after him, if there's something keeping you between you and your God, some sin, anything that needs to be taken out of the way, please do so. If you need the prayers of your brothers and sisters, please come. Always stand and always sing.